just a reminder, an ESPN FC on ESPN Plus is presented by the all-new Honda CRV Hybrid. As we remind you how Group B looks going into the final round of matches, it is a winner-takes-all tie between the U.S. and Iran. Uh, before we discuss whether or not the guys think they can get through, here's some reaction from the fans after the game with Alexis. USA! 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 <laughs> all right, all right. Listo, ready? Okay, Perfect. I'm just going to ask you guys a couple of questions. Um, England fan, surprised by that draw? Yeah, it was terrible. Should have won. England are much better, Ooh. but... Uh, USA fans, how did you see that draw? Uh, we should have won. won. We should have won. That <laughs> crossbar was so lucky. We should have won. USA had the game in their hands. <laughs> USA was going easy on them. Yeah. Well, it felt like a win because it was England. I mean, if you can draw against England, it's kind of a win. Feels like a bit of a loss, to be honest. But it was all right. We didn't play great. I think, in fairness, the US probably deserved a win. Guys, did the US kind of surprise you? Yes. I didn't think they'd be. I, di I, di I didn't think we'd draw. I thought we'd win. If you compare them to how they played against Wales, in, we should have won, but we just didn't bring our A game, and you guys did. And yeah, fair play. Yeah. Right then, Seb, fate is in the US's hands. Will they do it? Yeah, just to correct you, because I really love doing that on your show, it's not winner yes. takes all. Iran with a, with a draw would finish ahead of the United States. But so whoever wins goes through to the next round. Yeah, so it's a winner it's, takes all. It's, whoever wins. It's, it's must win. It's must win for the US. It's not must win for Iran. I think that's a critical difference. Iran can approach this game but much the winner takes all. Yes, uh, than the United States. I think the US... Yes, the winner would, would advance. Yes, in that way. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not a must win. Not a must win for Iran. Uh, so yeah, I think the US are favorites. I think based on what we saw today, they can clearly, um, if they can hang with a, an English side that puts six up on Iran in 1-6-2, I, I think that they're, they should be the favorites. And I think if you look at it from the US perspective, you are always going to have to win a game to get through. Um, it's a shame that they couldn't get those first three points in the game against Wales. That would put them in an incredible position here to, to maybe win the group and set themselves up for a great run into the knockout rounds. But, you know, I think if we look at this Iran team, they were much different than what we saw against England. I was impressed with Wales. Some people in the Wales camp after the game saying that it was the red card that made the difference. I thought Iran were better through the first 85 minutes of the game, clearly better. But I still think the U.S. are the favorites. I think the onus is on this American team. My one worry would be, and I know Casey and I have talked about this, and I think he mentioned it um, on the last edition of ESPN FC that we were on together, uh, is fitness. Because if Greg Berhalter really truly believes that this is his best 10 guys, and then whoever that, that striker is going to be, he's going to have to lean on these guys again uh, against Iran. And the third game in a week is usually when you're at your most fatigued. So uh, I could see fitness, as it seemed to play a factor in the second half against Wales, potentially being an issue for the United States if Greg Berhalter doesn't rotate, which at this point I would be very surprised to see him do. I think the other side of that is... Iran looked very comfortable. Take, oh, again, throw the England game out the window. But they looked very comfortable on the counterattack. You know you're sitting with a draw. Most likely will put you through yep. unless Wales does something remarkable. Just like what happened in 98. We lose to Germany in the first game. And then we're playing Iran. And you're thinking, okay, we need three points in this game to then maybe get a point in the third game to go through. And we absolutely throw everything at Iran. Right. And they hit us on the counter a couple times when we were out of shape because, yeah, you know, we hit the post three times. We did, you know, all these things that you think, okay, if the ball bounces a little differently, but it just shows you if you get unbalanced because in your mind, we have to win. We have to score goals. We have to do this. So what I want to see is a disciplined Greg Berhalter side, knowing that... 1-0 in the 89th minute is just as good as 1-0 in the, in the first minute. And you can always be more reckless later if you need it. But a team that has shown uh, in a good bounce back victory against Wales mm -hmm. that you can absorb a little pressure and look very dangerous on the counterattack, respect that, be professional. But in the end, you know what you need to do. It's in your hands. You win the game, you go through. Who's going to score the goals for the US to win oh. this game? 
you know, it's, it's hard to disagree with a lot of things that we've said about them. But at the end of the day, when they take the field right now, you don't think they're going to score. Right, Who's no. going to score the goal? They haven't created... McKenney's is a good chance today, but have they created an opportunity in this World Cup where you're going, how did that not go in the back of the net? So, I don't see how United States can be the favourites. You're playing against a side that, that Casey's just told you and Craig's just told you, were so comfortable on the break and they themselves couldn't finish it off. I've got to remember that. So, I don't see how United States can be favourites. So, you've got Iran to go through? Absolutely. I like the fact he had two up, he had extra bodies getting in the box today. And it's England that were playing, you know, with yeah. Stones and Maguire. I know Maguire's not played much, but it's still Stones and Maguire and Shaw and Trippier. They're all good players. Uh, and when you're putting balls in the England box, I mean, Maguire's head was a bit of a magnet today. Fair play to him, he was getting himself in the right position. Uh, you know, if they're throwing those kind of a good service in the box that like they did a few times in the first mm. half, down that right-hand side in particular, uh, the US, if they're able to do that against Iran, I don't think Iran have got the same nous or physicality defensively that England have. Uh, and then it's about taking your chances. I think it is going to be a tight one, but I, I do... If he can get the kind of performances that he, he had today... Yep from a similar group of players, I see the U.S. going through. Now, they do have some people that can come in. You right. know, obviously, if, let's say, uh, Timothy Weah is not at the level he needs to be at to start, obviously, there's a Gio Reyna with something to prove. There's an Aronson who can come in and, and give you a, a, a significant level of energy. Um, McKinney's a, a question mark again put in a great shift, but we know he was struggling at the end of the Wales game. I was surprised he played. I was surprised he played as well as he did. Yep. And, I'm, and I'm impressed. And I want to see that, but I'm still, you know, uh, what Seb and I talked about, is three games in a week for a significant group of this starting lineup who's not at that match fitness that I you think, would like to I see? I think he could play, he could possibly play Aronson behind, say, a Hadji Wright. You know, or behind the striker, you know, to prod those little balls through. That's just right. something a little different. He obviously didn't want to do that today. Uh, but we expect, well, we didn't expect the US to have as much possession today as we did. Uh, they'll have even more against Iran, you would imagine. So that might bring a Reina or an Aronson into play behind one striker. I mean, just give you that little more creativity. Possibly. And yeah. I can see that happening in the second half of the Iran yeah. game. I don't see it happening at the start. Right. I think it's horses for courses. We go with what we know. Unless you we have go to, with right? The, Unless we, you have yeah, to. Yeah, we go with the solid base that we've had for these two games. And then when you, when that second half starts and you need to win, then but they, but the, cavalry, play, the cavalry will come but on. But he didn't now. play like that against Wales, Steve, and he changed it for this game. So he has shown that he's prepared to make the changes. You but know, he didn't go for he didn't go a four four two against he didn't stick two strikers up. It was Josh Sargent that was up there. Right. I think it was Aronson that played. Was it? Aronson came up the came bench. On. Came on. Yeah. Bench. Somebody else played. I can't remember who it was. But he didn't quite play that way against Wales. So he's he's already shown. That yeah. It was almost a four three three against Wales, and then it was, was on one side. Right. And Pulisic was on the other Pulisic up front. Was on the other. But it but it did. It left Sargent on his own. Just kind of stuck on his own, and it looked. A little cleaner, kind of going in a in a four four two. But again, Stevie's point, the point that we've been talking about for the since they qualified. Yeah. Who's the number nine? Who's getting the goals? And who's going to get you the goal when you need it the most? So there's, so there's again is your problem. For you. That's why your coaches get paid all the bucks. Right. What do you do? Do you do what you did in the first half against Wales yeah. when you were dominant, or do you go with what you you saw today? against one of the favourites for the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, last point on this. Uh, who have you got in this winner-takes-all contest, Naden? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's not actually winner-takes-all, Dan. I don't know if you know. I know it's your show, but it's not winner-takes-all, <laughs> you know, because you ran blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, but winner-takes-all, Dan. I've, uh, I've got the USA in my bracket. And as it stands, it's still active, so I'm going to go for the USA. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.